Hey everybody and welcome to this video. I'm Inkslaura123 and this is going to be my April reading wrap up. So in this video I'm going to be telling you about the books that I read in the month of April. I'll tell you a little bit about them, tell you my views and opinions and of course give you my ratings out of five for each book. So yeah, hope you enjoy watching. If you do, please click like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. Also, don't forget to smash the notification bell to all notifications. Then you can see when I'm doing live streams and I've uploaded new videos. So if you are a fellow bookworm, let me know in the comments section what you read in April. What was your book of the month? Uh, also, what you're currently reading right now. I love getting your comments and uh, seeing about all your, you know, bookish adventures. Um, I had a really good month, actually, in April. I read some really, really good, good books, you know. Um which makes me happy because I hate to get to the end of the month and look back at what I've read and be like, mm. but no, April was filled with books that I really, really enjoyed. And I also tried to kind of mix things up a bit with the genres, like a bit of romance, a bit of horror, etc. So yeah, like I really, really had a good reading month. I mean, there were a couple of books that I wasn't particularly keen on and I did DNF, um, but overall, it was a good month, so I'm happy about that. Now, I've got my other phone here, um, so like I'm just going to be looking at my Goodreads and stuff like that. So the first book that I read in April, which feels so long ago that I read this book, uh, is a YA romance, and it's called This Is How You Fall In Love by Annika Hussein. There is the cover there. This was a YA book. Um, I picked it up from the library, and it was kind of like best friends, uh, fake dating, that kind of thing. And also, though, it had to do with, like, family and, like, friendships. And it was just, it was really, really good. Like, I really, really enjoyed this book so much. And as I say, for someone who's not, like, a major romance fan, like, in books, like, I just, I really enjoyed it. It made me feel light and fluffy and smiley. And I just, yeah, I thought it was really, really good. I love the main characters. It was Zara and Adnan, um, they're best friends. And they have to kind of do this fake relationship because he gets a girlfriend and, he, you know, her family really like them. And her mum and dad are kind of rowing and arguing and stuff. So she thinks, oh, I know what will stop them arguing and make them happy if I have this relationship with a boy that they really love and who's kind of part of the family and stuff. But it's really good. There is more to it as well. There's other little twists and stuff. But I really enjoyed it. I absolutely really enjoyed it I only read it in a couple of days because I couldn't put it down and it was very funny at times as well which was nice so a very good rom-com um, and as I say I give that four stars on Goodreads come and follow me on Goodreads by the way if you're on there um the link's down below so next up I read a very creepy horror book and I loved it <laughs> this is if you don't like scary dolls look away now this is the cover yeah it's creepy the collector and this is by uh, K.R. Alexander. So this I originally thought was a standalone, but it's not. It's a duology. This author does a lot of like middle grade slash kind of YA horror. And like when I saw it was middle grade, I'm not going to lie. I didn't think it was going to be that scary. I was like, oh, it's only middle grade. I'm 43. It's all good. I tell you now, it freaked me out. This book freaked me out more than some of the adult horror books that I've read, you know, recently. So don't be fooled by the middle grade thing. <laughs> so I give this book five stars. I absolutely loved it. And it did scare me. And it did creep me out. Which is exactly what I want when I get a horror book, you know. Um, so basically there's these creepy dolls. There's this witch in a forest. Um, these two girls have to go and stay with their uh, grandma. Because she's not well and stuff. And their mum obviously is with them as well. And basically they... <laughs> I don't want to give too much away about like spoiling it. But they basically... Mm, there's some creepy dolls, okay? Children go missing. There's dolls. There's a witch. It, it, Yeah, it's just creepy. And the very last page really creeped me out. Like, it really... Like, I finished it and I was like, whoa, which is great. So, yeah, I really loved it. Um, But, yeah, I did get number two, which I can't remember. Hold on, let me click on that. Uh, That was The Collected. But I didn't like that one. I DNF'd that after a few pages simply because it was literally going over what had already happened in The Collector. And I thought, I've already read that. I don't need to know that. And they were like, <laughs> anyway, so I didn't like number two, but number one, I mean, read it as a standalone, it'd be fine. Like, I really loved it. It was really creepy. I love dolls. I love creepy dolls. It was all good. So the next book I read was The Secrets of Heartwood Hall, and that was by Katie Lumsden. Um, <sighs> I don't know. I really wanted to like this book, but I just really didn't. I thought it was really boring. Like, it's just my 
honest opinion of it. I give it a two stars, which is not great. Um, I don't know. It was look. It was very well wrote. Like I loved her writing style, but I just found it so dull, so boring. It wasn't as creepy as I thought it was going to be. I didn't particularly like the characters. To be fair, like I'm reading about it on here, but I can't actually remember much about it because it just didn't stay in my mind. It says here a gripping and atmospheric debut. Um, a chilling gothic mystery in a love letter to Victorian fiction. As I say, wrote really, really well, but just just a bit boring. Set in 1852, young widow attempts to escape the shadows of her past by taking the position as a governess to an only child. Um, isolated country house. Like, I've read books like this before that have been a lot better, so I don't know. I just, I just didn't really enjoy it. And I just didn't find it that creepy, to be fair. Um, the next book I did DNF um which was Shiver by Ali Reynolds because I just yeah it was very similar to books that I've read before where a group of people um go on like this kind of holiday in the French Alps at this resort and then you know one by one they start getting murdered and it's there's secrets within the group and all that and I just read so many things that are very similar but so much better and I think that's like the book previously as well which I just said about so yeah, I just DNF'd it because I was like, oh. and also from the very beginning, I just didn't like any of the characters at all. I was, wasn't interested in any of them. So yeah, even the beautiful setting and the mentions of all the snow and stuff couldn't save it. And I just, I just DNF'd it. Uh, sorry. Now the next book I read, I really, now we're getting back to the books I like. So the next book I read was Melissa de la Cruz, The Headmaster's List. I picked this up from the library. I was really lucky. Our library here in Southend get a lot of brand new books, especially a lot of YA fiction, which is perfect because I love YA fiction. Um, and yeah, I was like, wow, you know, they've, they've got it in instantly. So it saved me buying it because I was actually going to buy this. So I didn't need to. I saved my money. I give it a five stars. It was a really, really good thriller. Um, it says one of them is driving. One of them was high. One of them screamed and one of them died. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I love these kind of YA thrillers. Um, it says, when 15-year-old Chris Moore is tragically killed in a, in a car crash, Argyle Prep is full of questions. Who is at the wheel? And most importantly, who is at fault? 18-year-old Spencer Sandoval wishes she knew. As rumours swell that her ex, Ethan, was the driver that fateful night, she can't bring herself to defend him. And their messy breakup has nothing to do with it. She can't remember anything from that night, not even what put her in that car with Ethan, Chris and Tabby Hill, the new loner in school. Was it just a night out that went very wrong? Uh, and is it just a coincidence they're all part of Argyle's esteemed honour roll, the headmaster's list, in a place ruled by a pedigree and privilege? <laughs> I love that, pedigree and privilege. Um, the answers can only come at a deadly price. Um, it says here, set against the glitz and glamour of an elite LA private school. I don't know why, but I really enjoy <laughs> really enjoy books that are set in these kind of elite private schools. And I don't know, I just I just do. Um, but yeah, I really really enjoyed it. It was a really good thriller. Um, I mean, some of them uh, decisions are a bit that she made, but like overall, yeah, really liked it. And as I say, I give it a five stars. So next book I read, another thriller. Uh, this was a way thriller by Gina Blacksill. I love Gina Blacksill books. Like, she's so good. If you have not read a Gina Blacksill book, where have you been? Like, she's so, so good. Um, so this is I Love You to Death. I really love the cover as well, especially the little flick. Can you see the flick there on the eyeliner, like the little wing? I could never do that very well. They were always a bit crooked when I did them. Um, but yeah, this was Love You to Death. And I just, oh, I actually wrote a comment here. I put, this was an amazing book. Love this author's books. This one was full of twists and turns. A must read. Five stars. Uh, I felt so invested in this story in the main character. Brilliant book. I actually wrote that in Goodreads. Um, it was, it was really, really good. It says, a dark, twisty way thriller exploring obsession, stalking and toxic love that keeps you guessing to the very end. And yeah, I, I found that really interesting, that, you know, the obsession and like trying to dress like someone and be like someone and then you find out the reasons why and there's lots, there's lots going on in this book. There's lots of twists, there's lots of turns and honestly, I was, I was completely wrong. I had some guesses going through it as you do when you read a thriller. And then I got to the end and I was like, what? Huh? So I love that. That was a great element. So um, lots of shock and surprise. 
So um, he says, someone is obsessed with Mia Hawkins. She's felt their gaze on the back of her neck. She's heard their footsteps walking home in the dark. She's glimpsed a shadowy figure and the flash of a camera. Mia doesn't know Jade, but Jade knows everything about Mia. In fact, she's turned herself into Mia's doppelganger from her long brown hair to the minute to the minute the minute details of her outfits she's so convincing that when jade's body is found by the cliffs everyone believes it's mia's body um but mia can't work out why anyone would in um in, i can't talk today sorry basically mia can't work out why this girl wants to look like her why would she want to dress like her why would she want to you know be like her um and why they'd end up dead as life as she knows it uh she's left with no idea who to trust or if she will be the next one to die so it's yeah it's really they're saying here it's a little bit like with hints of single white female and, and vertigo from hitchcock but yeah i get that it was you know it was it was kind of uncomfortable at times but really exciting and really gripping so yeah really good thriller as i say uh loved love you to death by gina blackseal and gave it a five stars the next book i read oh my god this book Oh my god, this book gave me so much happiness and so much, oh, I just loved it. Uh, this is Arthur and Teddy are coming out by Ryan Love. Um, the cover of the book, by the way, is just gorgeous. I love the way they're standing in the closet with the rainbow shirts and stuff. Very, very clever there. Um, honestly, I would love to read more books from this author. It was so good. Was so, so good. So this is about, I'm um, just looking up the name of the character, Arthur. Yeah. So Arthur is 79 years old and basically he has just come out as gay to his family. And some of his family have took it reasonably okay um, and been really supportive to him. And other members, I don't want to give spoilers, but there is a member of his family who's been really nasty and disrespectful and horrible and not understanding the slightest um so it's all to do with him coming out but then also at the same time his grandson uh wants to come out as gay but he's seen how his his granddad's being treated and then he's a bit like oh god you know do i want to say about my sexuality if this is how you know it's going um so it's that kind of thing but there's also you know there's a bit of a uh, an office romance with the the grandson and he likes this guy he works with and yeah there's just a lot going on but it all works. It all kind of, it just feels, it's weird because some aspects of it made me sad because of this family member being horrible. But overall, it was just a real feel good, like lovely book. And I won't give any spoilers or anything, but the ending, I just love the ending. I just loved all of it. It was it was so good. It was beautiful. So um, as I said, I'd love to read more from this author. Ryan Love, Arthur and Teddy are coming out. Um, and as I say, I gave it a five stars on Goodreads. Okay, next one was, um, this was weird. This was a weird book by Julia Bartz and it was The Writing Retreat. I had a different cover. I didn't have this cover. Um, <laughs> I give it a two stars because it was just weird. A book deal to die for. Um, so basically there's these, uh, there's this author, there's this famous feminist horror author called, what was her name? Rosa. Rosa, Rosa, Rosa Vallo. Um, she's very kind of controversial. She's done horror books and stuff. And she's basically got this uh, massive estate and she sets up this thing where wannabe authors and stuff can come and get like, uh, a, a, you know, a writing retreat. And she picks the winner and then they, I think they're going to publish the book who wins kind of thing from the person. But it all, it all goes a bit weird. Like, I, I don't know, I was kind of enjoying it. The women begin to die. So they're all women authors that she chooses, right? And they all get there and they're, they're supposed to be writing and stuff, but weird stuff starts to happen and they die one by one. And it, I don't know. It, I just got really confused and weirded out by it. But um, <laughs> just, it says here, unhinged, claustrophobic, closed door thriller will put you in, and pull you in and spit you out. Uh, I, I don't know. It was just weird. I mean, mixed reviews, you know, I've been reading some of the reviews. I tend to not read other people's reviews on Goodreads until I finish the books. I don't want to give spoilers to myself. And also I like to kind of go in open-minded. I don't want someone going, oh, me, 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 me. And then I'll just be like, eh. So I like to make my own choice and decisions and thoughts. But afterwards, I do like to read back to see if people agree with me or disagree. And, you know, I just, yeah. Anyhow, but people were kind of mixed about this. Some really, really loved it. And some were like me and just like, what was that? That was weird. Like, I don't know. But, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. But, yeah, two stars. Sorry. 
too weird for me. Now, the next book I read was a graphic novel, and this makes me smile because it was super sweet. And it was The Sad Ghost Club, Volume 3, Find Your Kindred Spirits. Now, I got this from the library. I'm not going to lie to you. I have read the first, uh, I don't think I've read number two. I wasn't sure if I had, but I don't think I've. But I did read The Sad Ghost Club, which was number one. And I remember just thinking, what was that? Um, and so, of course, when I saw this one in the library, I was like, hmm, didn't really like number one, but it wasn't awful kind of thing. And it's in the library. It's here. It's So anyway, it was a new book. I thought I'd get it out. And I have some plays I did because I really enjoyed it. It's a lot better than the first one. Um, it's about these ghosts and they're in this like club and they all have anxiety. And it also deals with other things like depression and grief and friendship and yeah it's kind of like it's cute it's simple artwork and stuff but it means more like to it if that makes sense you know and for someone who has bad anxiety which I do I do like the fact that any kind of anxiety repping books whether it's a graphic novel or an actual book book you know is is great you know it helps people and yeah I, I just really enjoyed it I thought it was very good so I give it three and a half there's no half points on here but I give it three and a half the only reason I didn't give it a four to round it up was I still don't know. Maybe this is mean. I'm stupid. Don't answer. <laughs> but I don't know if these ghosts are ghosts, like as in ghosts, ooh, or if they're people that kind of see themselves as ghosts. Because in the artwork, some of the people are dressed as, like, like, as I say, look, they're just like a ghost, like an old school, you know, sheet over the head kind of ghost, right? But other people around them are just like normal humans, so do they see himself as ghosts and it's got like a deep meaning or are they just actually ghosts and it's just a graphic novel and that's that. It's the only reason I kind of didn't round it up. But overall, it was really good. And if there is a number four, I probably would read it, actually. I would carry on with that. <laughs> right, the next book I also really loved. I give this book a four stars and I'll tell you the reason why I didn't give it the five. But it's For Her Consideration by Amy Spaulding. Uh, this is not the cover I had. I had the um, Afterlight from Illumicrate special edition box that I found on eBay. Um... <laughs> And yeah, this is really good. I really love this. It says here, perfect for fans of Casey McQuiston, who I, I also really enjoy her books. Uh, so uh, LGBTQI plus rep. Um, it's about this girl called um, Nina, Nina Rice. And she, she writes romance. She works in this um, company where she does like, hold on, I'll just, I'll read it to you. It's easier. Right. Since the crushing breakup three years ago, Nina Rice has written romance Um sorry has written romance friends her dreams of script writing for tv and even la proper out of her life instead she's safely out of the suburbs in her aunt's condo working her talent agency job from home that's where she worked in talent agency um it's been a few weeks since i've read this right <laughs> um da -da 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 -da. and certainly the employer hold on what okay so she works a talent agency job from home managing celebrity email accounts and certain that's plenty of writing and plot for her life. But a surprise meeting called by Ari Fox, a young actress on everyone's radar, stirs up all kinds of feelings Nina thought she'd deleted for good. So she works from home. She doesn't really kind of interact with people. And she um, like does like emails and pretends to be these celebrities who the agency work for kind of thing. Anyway, so Ari is sexy, out and proud and a serious control freak, according to Nina's boss. She has her own ideas about how Nina should handle her emails and about getting to know her ghostwriter. When she tells Nina she should be writing again, Nina suddenly finds it less scary to revisit her abandoned life than seriously consider that Ari is flirting with her. Between reconnecting with her old crew and working on a new script, a relationship with a movie star... Uh, seems like something she could, she definitely she'll definitely mess up. But what could be more worth the risk? So I love the relationship between them. I love the banter. I love the connection and the chemistry and all that. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of smart, but not too much. I don't like smart in books. Like I'm not being approved, but it just makes me cringe. Like, and this book had a little bit of stuff, but not too much. It was all handled quite nicely. Um, the thing, the thing I didn't like about the book is every single time that, um, what's her name, Ari spoke to Nina, she called her her full name. So literally every time, like, oh, Nina Rice, you look great today. Oh, Nina Rice, should we go for dinner? Nina Rice, shall we? You know, it was constant and it really freaking irritated me. And I know that's petty and stupid, but it just did. Because you don't walk around talking to someone you know and call them their surname all the time. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I found it really 
really annoying. <laughs> but like overall, I did really enjoy it. It was it was a good romance and a little bit predictable at times, but yeah, it was good. I did enjoy it. So yeah, I gave that four stars uh the next book i read was so good so so good a kind of spark by ellie mcnichol um this book i'd had on my radar for so long and i just not got round to getting it and stuff i saw it at the library i picked it up and the main reason also that i got it is because there's literally just started a new tv series that has been kind of inspired by the book and i kind of wanted to read the book first and then you know get onto the show like see it come to life on the screen as such per se but um, I have to say, being honest, I love, love, love the book, but the TV show, I'm just not going to bother carrying on with because to me, it was so different. I mean, obviously elements of it are the same, but so many different bits and pieces that didn't match the book. So I think it's kind of based on it, but it's different, if that makes sense. Anyhow, but um, so this is uh, about this girl who is a uh, neurodivergent girl, campaigns for a memorial when she learns that a small Scottish town used to be used to burn witches simply because they were different. So she kind of connects to the fact that these, you know, witches were killed because they were different. And she feels like she is treated not very nice because she is different. Um, and yeah, you know, trying to get this kind of whole uh, memorial done for the witches. It was such a beautiful thing. And, you know, she, she's autistic and you get to see how things are for her, how she feels, how she reacts, which I thought was, you know, really good to kind of get an insight and have autistic rep in a book um but yeah i just really enjoyed the book didn't enjoy the show so at least i read the book so i'm really happy about that but yeah five stars really really good it is middle grade but it just kind of worked even as an adult i did you know and there were parts in it where i felt really sad like when she was bullied and stuff in school oh like it really it gets you because you get to like feel connection to the character and so when she's picked on and stuff it just it hurts you as a reader so yeah it's it was, yeah very well very well done right the next book i read was a book oh oh yeah i dnf this one was alice feeney daisy darker um i really loved i can't remember the other one by alice feeney that i loved uh hold on i'm just scrolling i'm scrolling they see me scrolling oh i can't find it anyway i read a book by her that i really really loved and oh rock paper scissors that was it but this one just did not work for me it was so weird and I just I just didn't like it It was a family reunion that leads to murder um yeah it's a little bit similar vibes to then there were none by Agatha Christie which I have read actually and I really love that so you know it's just kind of secrets and the family and I, it was just really weird I just didn't like it I DNF'd it and I, I skimmed right to the end just to see what happened. And then I was like, oh, is that it? Like, I just, meh. Meh. It was kind of predictable. And it, it, there is a little bit of a shock element of it without giving any spoilers. But for me, I found it really predictable from the get-go what it was going to be. So that is why I found it predictable. But you might not find it predictable. That's just me. Anyhow, I just, I didn't, I just didn't enjoy it. Anyway... <laughs> So that's that. I would still definitely read more books by Alice Feeney. Like, I'm not going to give up on her work because I really enjoyed the other one. But this one's just meh. Just meh. Right, the next one I read was Royal Blood by... Royal Blood. <laughs> Royal Blood, even, by Amy Carter. I did not have this cover. I had a different cover. Um, I actually like this cover better, I think. I don't know. My one was, like, red, white, and black. And it was all like... I don't know. Now, the thing is, I thought, as a lot of people thought, that Royal Blood was going to be about vampires like a royal connection with the vampire nothing to do with vampires i'm going to tell you now if you think it's vampire related do not get it it's, it's not none do with vampires at all the only connection with vampires is the word blood in the title right um this is going to be a series i don't know when number two is out but there is going to be a series or a trilogy or something i don't know but it was good like i give it a three star which is good but it's not amazing but i did enjoy it i did read it all and like i read it over a weekend and it was like yeah this is yeah, it, was, it was all right you know um it's basically about this girl who at the beginning i thought was really sassy and a bit wild and then as the book went on she just become i don't know not as sassy and not as strong i don't know that's just my perception of her um but she's basically uh she's 17 year old evan and she is the um, sort of illegitimate child of the King of England. 
it's all a bit silly in that respect but anyway just go with it just go with it and it work um <laughs> so he's the king and you know he's obviously got his position to uphold and his you know his royal royalness and so he's never told the public about the fact that he's got this daughter um she's kind of kept at a boarding school but then um something happens at the boarding school and she gets into trouble and then basically ends up living at the palace um you know there's some members of the family that are not very nice to her and also she kind of starts going out and stuff there's some drama that happens and then this guy who she's hanging around with gets murdered she gets the blame for it yeah it's a lot to explain so i won't go over it too much but it is good like it is it's a bit silly but it's good and would i continue the series maybe probably yeah i probably would um but yeah so that's royal blood by me carter and i give it a three star but yeah it was all right but it's nothing to do with vampires i'm just putting it out there next book i read um i also dnf'd actually come to think of it oh no did i or did i not i can't remember i don't know, i think i skim read it see if if i don't like a book i dnf it i i just stop reading it or sometimes I skim read, so I just you know flick a few chapters and then you know just kind of see how things go, right? But yeah, a lesson in vengeance by Victoria Lee. Um, yeah, this one started off really good. It's at this um this boarding school, another boarding school, Dalloway School, um set in the mountains. It's very creepy kind of vibes. It's supposed to be haunted by ghosts and witches. And this girl, the main character, who is Felicity morrow she um was into witchcraft and stuff and tarot and summoning the dead and all that happy stuff um her ex girl well not ex but her, her girlfriend died because of stuff that they were kind of messing with with the dark stuff and now she's back at the school and there's this new girl and yeah they're trying to research on what happened to these witches that were killed there and i don't know like it wasn't bad but it just felt really depressing like when i was reading it i remember just thinking do you know what i mean like mm, it was just, <laughs> just really yeah a bit dull for something like witches and dark and magic you'd think it'd be a bit more va va voom but it just lacked it lacked something so i just got really bored but it was you know it was all right so I give it a two stars, which probably should yeah, which probably should have been a three. But anyway, but anyway, right. So I've got two books left to tell you about. So one of them I have in front of me, and that is the next book, which is In the Lives of Puppets by T. J. Clune. I'm gonna hold it up here. Ooh. Um. So this book, oh my god. Now I'll be honest with you, I have not enjoyed other T. J. Clune books. What we've been. Uh, the House in the Cerulean Sea, Under the Whispering Door. I've not read Wolf Song or Raven Song or Heart Song or anything like that. But I, I didn't like the other books that I read. Um, so I kind of like, when I heard about this book, I liked the idea of the story. But then I found out the author was TJ Clune and I was like, hmm, not really had much success. Just not connected to his words and his stories before. But I thought I'd give it a go anyway. And I'm so glad I did because this book, I tell you now, was amazing. Like literally, like literally, it was amazing, and I'm not getting rid of it. <laughs> Sometimes with my books, I get I read them, keep them in good condition, and then like I sell them on eBay, like resell. But this ain't going nowhere. Uh, this is a special edition from Waterstones. Uh, it's got the sprayed edges, as you can see, really, really pretty. Um, obviously the uh, signature from the author, which is there, and I. It's lovely green as well, look, on the cover. I have got a few finger marks on it, but I'm keeping it, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I love this book so much. And I tell you, I'm tempted, not now, but at some point in the future, to try again with his other books. Because I think now I've got his kind of writing style and characters, I might enjoy them more. I can give them a, a reread and give another go. But anyhow, but this book, it says here, it's in, inspired by the adventures of Pinocchio and also uh, the Swiss family Robinson. The Lives of Puppets is a masterful and heartfelt fantasy adventure. Here, even a family assembled from spare parts might become a whole. Um, I just, I can't, I can't. I get so emotional. I love it so much. Uh, welcome to the heart of a peculiar forest and the beginning of an extraordinary journey. In a small house built into the branches of a tree live a human named Victor and three robots. These are a pleasantly sadistic nurse machine. I love the characters, honestly. A small vacuum. Oh, Rambo, I love you. Uh, desperate for love and attention. And a fatherly inventor android named Giovanni Lawson. 
Together, they're a family, hidden and safe. But then Vic salvages an unfamiliar android labelled Hap. He learns that Hap and Geo share a dark past where they hunted humans and Hap unwittingly gives away Geo's location. Before they know it, robots from Geo's former life arrive to capture and return the android to its old laboratory in, get this, the City of Electric Dreams. I love that song. Anyway, uh, the rest of the unconventional family must travel across an unforgiving and otherworldly country to rescue Geo from decommissioning or worse, reprogramming. Along the way, Vic must decide if he can handle his feelings for Hap, even if they come with strings attached. So I just, yeah, I love this book so much. Like it was, it, I yeah, it was just brilliant. Like it was so beautiful. Rambo, the little vacuum like I just, I just love Rambo. Nathan is as I say my fiance. Uh, he was sick of hearing about Rambo. Like every time I'd read something, I'd be like, "Oh, Rambo's just done this in the book." And Rambo, just lovable characters, really interesting. The thought of like humans just you know not being here really anymore and robots taking over, I think could happen. Um, it was I don't know. It was just beautiful and different and I loved it so of course I give it a five stars and the last book I read in the month of eight oh hold on I've got to check actually no I was going to say the last book in April but that's actually registers as the first of May so that was the last book there we go in the lives of puppets was the last book I was just going to talk about death of a bookseller but you have to wait till next month to find out about that one um <laughs> but yeah so you want to know what was my favorite and least favorite book of the month right well my least favorite let's start with the negative Ooh. My least favourite was probably, uh, uh, yeah, probably going to have to be um, Shiver or The Secrets of Heartwood Hall because, as I say, read books so similar to that and done so much better. So, yeah, not keen on them. And, of course, the favourite book, which I don't think is going to be a surprise to you, is da, 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 Book of the Month for April in the Lives of Puppets, TJ Clune. Honestly, read it. Read it, read it, read it. It's beautiful. I'd love to see this book as a film. Like, it would be so cool as, like, a film or, like, a Netflix series or something. Seeing the robots and the, the forest and, like, everything, like, just come to life on the screen would be awesome. Um, but, yeah, that is my book of the month. Okie dokie. Right, very quickly, let me tell you about my current read and then what I plan on reading next. This is my current read. Uh, so it's The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. Um, what was the first one called? Oh yeah, Once Upon a Broken Heart. There we go. Um, so I absolutely loved Caravel and I love that series. This is um, the sequel to Once Upon a Broken Heart, but it's you can read them separate. Like this sort of series is set in the kind of world of Caravel, but you don't have to have read that. Um, but I'm not going to say too much about it because it's a sequel, I just realised. But yeah, I mean, it, look, it's like kind of fairy tales with twists and there's romance and, you know, like it's just really good. It says happy endings can be cool, but they're difficult to hold on to. The main reason I wanted to show you this book is because not only is this bit pretty, look at that. That is gorgeous. Now, apparently there's different hidden covers. I've got the flowers one. Um, and not only that... We've got a little map. I do like a nice map in a book. I'm a proper nerd. Oh, look, signature. Stephanie Garber's signature in a lovely purple colour there. Um, but look at this. Ooh, I love maps. Anyhow, but yeah, this is my current read. I literally started it last night, so I'm not that far. I'm literally on page 38. So far, so good. Um, because I read the last book absolutely ages ago, I can't really remember too much about it. So I did have to go online and do one of those spoilers and recaps thing and kind of read through all that. And it's slowly but surely come back into my mind what happened. But yeah, I'm really loving it so far. Not every love is meant to be. So yeah, it's good to see Jack's back as well. So that's my current read. And my next book that I've got planned is this one. And it's a Eurovision song contest themed book. I love the Eurovision. This is Somewhere in the Crowd by Katrina Logan. Four people, 12 years, one Eurovision. And it's about a group of people who, like myself, are obsessed with Eurovision. And they basically meet up every single year, every Eurovision. But then things start to happen in their lives, takes different directions and stuff. And yeah, I just think this is going to be so good. It says, get the party started with the most joyous read of the year. So the Eurovision Song Contest is next week. And I plan on reading it next as in you know so it's all like in that kind of mindset of my eurovision obsession <laughs> 
watch the final, you know, semi-finals, final, read the book. Yeah. Eurovision. Love it. So that is going to be my next book. Anyhow, that is the end of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I hope I've made sense. I do tend to ramble, so I apologise for that. You know, I watch a lot of people do book, like reading wrap-ups and book reviews and they just speak so well and so clearly and I just get kind of rambly and I stumble with my words or I forget things or I get them wrong and I just feel a bit useless. But I try my best and I just, you know, I love, I love reading. I love talking about books. It's my passion. It's my main hobby in my life. And I just, yeah, I'm just happy to sit here and, you know, share with you the books that I've read and stuff. <laughs> See, I'm rambling again. I'm so sorry. Listen, please give this video a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Please subscribe. Uh, let me know what books you're currently reading, what books you read, etc, etc. Don't forget to check out my other channel, Minx Laura 123 ASMR. The link's down below to that. Also on my social media, including my Goodreads page. The links are down below. And if you care to spoil me or treat me, I have a throne wish list, which, uh, yeah, it's got some cool stuff on there. So, yeah. All right, everyone, take care of yourselves. Happy reading. And I will see you next month. I always do these if you're new here. I always do these every month, my little monthly reading wrap ups. Obviously, I do book hauls as well. If I ever get like, you know, a good few new books, I'll do book haul videos. Um, I need to do another read with me. I haven't done one of those for ages. So look out for that. <laughs> um, and yeah, next month, I'm thinking of bringing back, thinking of bringing back my TBR games because I really enjoy doing those. Um, I just, I, it's because I'm a mood reader. I kind of struggled with that because obviously a TBR game is, a, you know, a game and you, you get to have your book kind of chosen for you in a, a selected way. And I'm not good with that because I'm a mood reader. So, but I do like the surprise element and the fun of it. So yeah, maybe next month there'll be another TBR game. I don't know. But anyway, I'll see you soon. Mwah. Happy reading. Bye.